Hey, what's up guys? How's it going? It's Dakota Bishman here, and today we're going to kind of go over what are the largest targets you can get away with soloing without getting capped. So, somebody in the comment section was curious about this, and I can kind of give you an idea, uh, just from my experience, based off of targets that I've hit in the past. Alright? What I do know is, is that, like, somebody like this, for example, where he's got 350, 345, 345 across, is a very easy soloable target. That's only 1.1 million troops. The main thing with this, though, is that you have to be encountered to what his frontline is. The main thing is, is that if you're not encountered, then yeah, you'll get capped or you'll get hurt potentially more than if had you been encountered. So the main thing is you have to be encountered for this really to work out. So the the chances of you like getting a so, like a solo and getting capped is always there. Like in fact, really, I, I hate to break it to a lot of people, but if you want the confidence of me telling you that it's always going to work out 100 percent, 50 times out of 10 it's like not even it's not gonna happen like it's as much as i'd like to believe it uh but what i can tell you is how you can kind of at least predictably do it so like somebody like this right who has 600k across and a mil across right which now you've gone from um, about a million troops to about four million troops this is about where i would say the cap is at for sure uh because Again, if you want to go for 4 million troops, you're immediately going to find that it's very difficult to do. Now, the way you have to approach these kind of people is you can't send your leader, and you've basically got to sit there and poke at his front line until you weaken his front line down to where it's about 2 million-ish troops, and then you can start throwing your leader in. But, of course, you could throw Siege in if you want to give yourself a little bit of confidence. For me, I just hate the, the amount of time that it takes, so I just... Usually I just eyeball it and say, yeah, oh, hell, screw it. If I get capped, then I'll just keep sending. <laughs> uh, but that's because of how I am. I know some people would probably feel a little differently. Um, but, you know, that's, again, something that, uh, you know, you'll notice, like, with this target, right? It's 1.2 million, but he's got some tier 1. Don't let this fool you. This doesn't really matter as much. Tier 1's a pretty easy fluff. When it gets to about a million or two, though, then you need to be a little cautious about it. Uh and it's not to say you can't do it, but I would throw Siege in because when I've hit players with like a mil or two or so tier one, and then they've got like four or five hundred K tier four, you'll get capped sometimes. Uh, and it does happen. Like I, I really want when I determine whether or not I can solo, I, I base it really more on what is it exactly that they've got up here. You know, do they have a lot of tier three and tier four? Chances are you probably get capped if you're not careful. Uh, and especially if it's like in one troop type, you know, so if like if it's all infantry, then yeah, I'll send cavalry and not worry about it. You know, like I, I won't get terribly worried about getting capped because it's a counter and a counter is going to just completely demolish. Like there's nothing that that front line is going to be able to do aside from maybe be a pest. But aside from that, it's not going to do a hell of a lot and you'll kill a lot either way. Uh, but when you're looking at like targets like this guy where you're a little bit higher now you know it's still close right you're you're at this point this is about where the threshold is when i solo people because once you get to where they're about 500,000 tier 4 or a couple hundred thousand like i think it's around 400,000 tier 3 i think um, when you get to this threshold, this is where you got to probably hit them with a couple blank solos first just so you can avoid getting capped right away and that's at least from my experience, that's just kind of how you want to dim it down a little bit until you get closer to something that's a little bit more like this, where, you know, it's it is front lines weakened enough that you can eventually get rid of that first front line. So you can get rid of, like, if he was in, in front line, for example, I would go all the I would send solos without my leader until his infantry front line was gone. And then I would swap over to the next troop type in that phalanx. So if I was hitting him an inf, right, or he was in inf for that matter, then I'm sending cav phalanx at him, right, but the next troop type in that line then would be cavalry, and then range, so I would be sending range, because that way I can get rid of the cavalry, and then once I get rid of the cavalry, then I can send infantry to clear out all the range, uh, but that's kind of how I go about doing it, um, again, you know, with reassurances for me, I, I'm just saying that, I mean, when I hit somebody with 3.8 million, 
And in case you guys are wondering, I'll have a link in the description below, and you can check it out and actually see how I went about doing it. Uh, but it's just like, when you get to targets like this guy, for example, where he's just all tier 1 archers, just send infantry, you don't need to worry about it. Like, people with tier 1, like 1.81-ish million, are not, they're going to completely get demolished. Like, it just doesn't work out. If you want to actually know whether or not your march is going to work, though, the uh, you if you remember right, I've always told you guys that if you wanted to do your alley trapping and stuff like that, you can look up Alpha Smurf's uh, template that he made. And basically, he, all he did was kind of do some tests to determine what the fraction of troop minimum was that you could potentially get away with on a rally, right? Now, of course, this stuff was... A little outdated now that we've got the familiar update and everything, but it's still relevant for this kind of stuff. Uh, so if you wanted to know for sure, you know, one way you can do it is actually just take the total amount of tier one that a person has, right? And then you just have to take 375,000 troops, and then you have to times that by the actual, uh, uh, well, like the total amount of what we called strength, I think, in this in this template. Um, and again, it's like, if you want to know the numbers, and I'll tell you right now, it's uh, exactly 9.189 uh, for a single tier 1 to tier 4 troop. So in this case, I would have to take 375,000 troops and multiply that by 9189, and that's about how many troops you can get away with soloing, okay, without having too many problems. Like, without, like... <laughs> You know, having a fear of your life, which, according to this, that would mean you can solo up to about 3,445,875 tier 1. So, if my calculations are correct, if I send an imp front line of 375k tier 4, or even like 50k tier 3 as buffer, and it's only like 324,000 infantry, that should be plenty to demolish an archer front line of almost 2 million. Like, it's it's more than enough to, to handle that. Obviously, uh, you know, the one thing that I can recommend if you're going to go about soloing targets like I was, though, is you definitely want to make sure that you're getting access to these 40% drop uh, familiars because these right here are going to give you a huge chunk that you'll definitely want. If you get the fourth slot, I definitely recommend that you also get Aquarius for this because, in my opinion, although I don't have them yet, another 15% on top of that is even better, uh, especially since that applies to not just the 40% for that one type, but also 15% across, which is a real big gain that you want to make sure you get use out of, you know, but uh, at least for soloing targets anyway, that's, that's kind of my advice with that. Uh, it's just that when you start doing anything like... Uh, let me see if I get one guy like... Uh, like this guy, for example... Pretty easy. Uh, you still got a lot of tier two in there, but it's really just infantry. Like it's a front line of range, and there's barely anything else to stop you. Like this guy would be a pretty easy peasy thing to smack him with infantry. Uh, I don't know. Let me see if I've got like a report in here where I might have tried doing. Yeah. So like here, here's that 3.8 million guy that I was telling you about. And like here, okay, I I sent a rally at him. Okay, and and it wasn't even a full rally. It was a two person rally. Okay, and for somebody that big, which, I mean, even then, right, you can see why I did, right, because even though he's got a lot of tier one in there, okay, you got to be very mindful of the fact that if the guy gets anywhere approaching six to seven hundred thousand tier four and lots and lots, like, I would say the cut, like, the cut ratio for me was about even with what I'm sending. So if, like, somebody's pushing nearly double of the amount of tier four I'm sending in one or two front lines at a time, I don't touch that with a five foot pole with my leader. Like I'm not going to, uh, because it's just not worth it. A lot of the time it's just, you're, you're going to waste a shit ton of tier four doing it is what I'm trying to say. I, it's not that you can't do it. It's that chances are you'll get capped and then you just have to keep sending solos until you can completely burn him and then you'll get your leader back and then you can just keep going back at it. But I mean, really, if you're, if you're, if we're trying to be effective, all right, even with another person, like, let's say you add just two people. I mean, two people in a rally makes a hell of a difference. Uh, and really, you can make your life a lot easier by splitting the losses across multiple different people. Like, if you can fill a rally, then that's awesome. But obviously, you know, you know, like here you can see when I started soloing at 2.2 mil, I mean, it's not now at this point, you know, it's like I'm sending infantry 
but you can see why that's working just fine, right? Because at this point, I've already got rid of his infantry, and I'm all I'm hitting now at this point is range, and I'm not gonna, I'm not scared of that. That's not gonna cause me any agony whatsoever. And because I sent 50k or so at the time, you can see why. Obviously, I lose a lot of tier three in the process, right? But the benefit of that is I don't lose my tier four. And in, in this case, I, I completely wiped out that imp front line. I wiped out his tier three front line, and then I started to dip into his tier four. And once I dipped into it again for a final hit, you can see here where it, it clearly kind of rippled. Okay, so like here I lost twenty thousand, but he lost five hundred and thirty-one thousand. Okay, and and the reason why that is is just the principle. It's very. It's not even complicated. Okay, now obviously you can see I, I was in counter phalanx, but that wasn't important. What was important was what I was sending. Alright, now if you're wondering why do I have those little four troops, that's because of the four troop manipulation, which, in case you're wondering, okay, if I'm in cav phalanx and I put four units here, four units here, and infant in the back, I save myself from getting hit on the wall. I also save myself from that initial brunt hit. So that kind of keeps you from losing a little bit of damage in the pack. It's not a super big noticeable change, but I still do it because I like to try and reduce losses where I can. It's a tiny thing, but it helps. Um, now, of course, that was an example with somebody like I just cleared out with a rally. Um, you know, and that's something really common. You'll see a lot of people on YouTube do it. Avitrex has done it all the time. Uh, it's just something that people do. But let's say like I was going to solo somebody like this who had 12 million troops. Okay, this is a no-brainer. You should not solo anyone above 10 million troops unless you just like losing your leader. Like, this is suicide. You're not going to get very far trying to solo someone that big. You can rally a somebody like that, right? And then if, let's say, you know, what if he had just a million drakes and uh, maybe he has, I don't know, 350k tier 3 cavalry and that was it. Okay, then sure, we can send range. But then I would almost recommend in those situations, you want to put some siege in there. And there's a 50-50 shot of you losing your leader. But if you keep sending range, you're going to win every single time because cavalry will always lose to range. Even if you're sending a blank march without a leader, it's it's a fundamental mechanic to the game that will never change. And I, yet I see a lot of people that ask me, like, well, I need the best gear and the best jewels and all this stuff. And it's like, guys... If you know the fundamental mechanics to the game, that should not change. Obviously, yeah, you're, you're going to be a little bit more effective with gear and jewels. You're going to be a little bit more effective with familiars. You're going to be a little bit more effective when you've got your talents turned on. But at the end of the day, range is always going to be cavalry. And even without your stats, without your familiars, it's still going to do a hell of a lot more damage than had you sent, like, cavalry on cavalry or... Or the you know the counter, which would be like imp on cavalry, which would be suicide. Okay, like that's that's what you don't want to do. Uh, and yet I see so many people that will rally people like that and lose a bunch of troops over it, and then they're like, well, I wonder how come that didn't work. It's like because you can't do that. <laughs> uh, but like somebody like this, right? Where again, he's a mildly sized target, but your problem will be obviously you've got a lot of tier two in here. Okay, and for tier 2 targets, even like this, I couldn't solo this guy. Because he's at that, you know, he's well past that 4 mil mark. Okay, like if you're going to hit somebody with 6 million troops, you're going to have to send a couple of solos to wear him down before you start sending your leader. And if this were an imp frontline, I'd clear out his infantry, which would take a while, right? Because he's got a lot of tier 2 in there. But then once I got rid of that infantry, the next thing would be range. So then I'd start sending infantry to start wiping that cannoneer chunk. And once I got it close enough to where I had about 2 million or so, then I would start sending my leader in with a, and, and try going for that complete rampage of a solo. But even then, I wouldn't do it until I probably got somewhere around two to 400,000 sharpshooters because your leader will probably get capped in those situations because there's just that much tier 4 in there. Like, when you're doing anybody with more than 375k and, and more than 3 slots and it's about double, then this tends to be a pretty hard thing to do without getting capped. Uh, but, you know, I hope that's, you know, the insight I gave you is at least helpful uh, and hopefully you can use it and be successful in your solos and uh, needless to say, I'll see you guys next time.